cows. I'm pretty sure you've heard of them before. They're great for many things, like leather, milk, and beef. In the 1970s and early 80s, people are eating a lot of beef, and it turns out the cows are eating a lot of each other as well. You see, farmers are feeding their cattle something called meat and bone meal. It's basically animal feed made with leftover meat from slaughtered animals. It contains a lot of protein, and unbeknownst to the farmers at the time, it contains quite a bit of special protein that probably shouldn't be in there. On December 22nd, 1984, a cow on a farm in the UK is acting aggressively and is also experiencing tremors and a lack of coordination. A vet comes to take a look at it, and the cow is given the name Number 133. This cow is certainly an interesting case. In February of 1985, Number 133 dies. Six other cows on the farm end up experiencing the same symptoms. In September, the government assigns the name Number 142 to one of the sick cows, slaughters it, and performs an autopsy. Upon examination, the brain appears to resemble a sponge due to all of the holes in it. This is quite concerning to the government examiners, not only because brains aren't supposed to look like that, but also because this hasn't been seen in cows before. In November of 1986, the State Veterinary Service declares that 133 and 142 were killed by a new disease, and they name it bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE for short. Okay, well, what is BSE? Bovine means it affects cows, spongiform means it makes the brain look like a sponge, and encephalopathy just means it harms the brain. Even though it caused an epidemic, BSE isn't viral or bacterial. It's what's known as a prion disease. All mammals have proteins called prions in their brain. It's incredibly rare, but prions can misfold, which really isn't good. This causes the prion in question to malfunction, and it infects other prions around it. This ends up leading to brain damage, which kills the victim. The immune system doesn't fight it because infected prions aren't foreign. Symptoms of BSE include paranoia, lack of coordination, trouble standing and walking, tremors, aggression, weight loss, and decreased milk production. It's progressive, which means it gets worse over time. Symptoms of BSE only show up four to six years after being infected, and after symptoms appear, the cow dies within two weeks to six months. There is no vaccine, no cure, and it has a 100% fatality rate. A cow's prions can just misfold on their own, but it can also be transmitted when one animal eats another that has BSE. It doesn't take a whole lot either. In fact, in a study later conducted during the epidemic, a cow got infected with BSE after eating a piece of meat that was the size of a peppercorn. There is no way to diagnose the disease in live cows. The only way to truly know if your cow is BSE is to cut its head open. Alright, so how did 133 and 142 get BSE? Nobody knows for sure who the first case was, but there are two leading theories. BSE can occur on its own, so 133 and 142 could have gotten it from eating meat and bone meal that was made from a spontaneous case of BSE. The second theory suggests that the infected meat in their feed was from a sheep infected with scrappy, which is pretty much just BSE, but for sheep. Studies of the disease begin in April, and government ministers are informed of the situation on June 5th. In April of 1988, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, and Food, or MAFF for short, creates the Southwood Working Party, a committee led by a guy named Richard Southwood. It has the important job of looking into BSE and advising the government on what it should do. By the summer of 1988, 727 cases have been confirmed. Not good. To curb the spread, the British government passes Bovine Spongiform Encephalopathy Order 1988 on June 14th. It establishes the following rules. You gotta tell the government if you think a cow of yours has BSE. You gotta keep the cow on your farm until it's inspected. The veterinary inspector can prevent you from moving the cow off of your farm if they think it has BSE. Inspectors and police officers can check to see if you have a, a license for moving your cow. Most importantly, the law goes after meat and bone meal. Selling feed made from animals is now banned, as is feeding it to animals. Also, if an inspector from the MAFF thinks you're violating the rules, they can take samples of your animal feed. Everything in this law goes into effect on June 21st, 1988, except the feed ban, which does so on July 18th. A lot of farmers already have a bunch of meat and bone meal in storage, so farmers decide to use up all of their feed before the law becomes active. Cows across the nation have a feast, which undoubtedly spreads the disease further. In August, the government introduces the compulsory slaughter of infected cows. The government, as kind as they are, comforts the worried farmers. If the government slays your cow, they will fully compensate 50%. How generous. In December, the government orders that all milk from infected cattle be destroyed, except milk that's being used to feed their young. By the end of 1988, 2,180 cases have been confirmed. On February 27, 1989, the Southwood Committee releases the Southwood Report. They have come to a comforting conclusion. BSE is probably derived from Scrappy. Scrappy can't infect humans. Therefore, BSE can't infect humans. They refer to an infected cow as a dead-end host, 
meaning that it can't infect other animals. Wonderful news. In the report, they say that if they're wrong about this, it would be really bad. On June 13th, 1989, the government bans offals for human consumption. Offals are just internal organs. This law is bad news for any domestic consumers of cow livers, brains, and testicles. Because the ban only applies domestically, offal enjoyers outside of the UK can still feast on ones being exported. In July, the EU bans all imports of British cattle born before the 1988 feed ban. Later in the month, John Gummer is promoted to Minister of Agriculture. Hopefully he can get this under control. By the end of the year, the epidemic is unsurprisingly worse. 7,133 cases have been confirmed in the UK, along with 15 in Ireland. In February of 1990, the government finally decides to stop screwing over the farmers and offers compensation of 100%. On April 3rd, the Spongiform Encephalopathy Advisory Committee, or SEAC for short, is formed with the task of advising the government on how to get through the situation that is progressively getting worse. Later in the month, Britain bans exports of ovals to the EU, and the EU also bans this. The vast majority of infected cattle are female, which doesn't make much sense at first glance. A Y chromosome can't really protect bulls from the disease, so why do they make up such a low percentage of cases? Remember how symptoms only show up in cows four to six years after they're infected? Because dead cows aren't known to produce a lot of milk, dairy cows generally live long enough to start showing symptoms. Beef cows, on the other hand, are slaughtered when they're around two years old. So, for males, they're still contracting BSE, it's just that they're being slaughtered and put on store shelves before anyone can catch it. A scientist named Richard Lacey is sounding the alarm over the safety of British beef and is also calling for the slaughter of entire herds that have been infected. He's convinced that the disease can spread to humans in the form of VCJD. So what's VCJD? CJD stands for Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, and it's acquired randomly and mostly in the elderly. Symptoms include loss of intellect and memory, changes in personality, loss of balance and coordination, slurred speech, vision problems, insomnia, hallucinations, abnormal jerking movements, tremors, progressive loss of brain function and mobility, weakness in limbs, blindness, loss of ability to move or speak, and a coma. It usually kills within a year, and again, there is no vaccine or cure. Yeah, scary stuff. Your odds of getting this are literally one in a million because there is one, usually one case per million people each year. Your chance of getting struck by lightning is one in 15,300, so you're probably good. Anyway, the V in VCJD stands for variant. The main difference that matters at the moment is that VCJD is transmitted from eating confected meat, and CJD is just acquired by dumb luck. Dr. Lacey is absolutely ridiculed for believing that you can get VCJD from BSE infected meat, and in May, the government actually releases a statement pretty much calling him an alarmist nerd and telling him to shut up. The government assures everyone that British beef is safe to eat. A cat just got diagnosed with feline spongiform encephalopathy after eating food that had cattle parts in it. So much for the dead-end host. This is quite alarming, but again, the government says it's all good. The media is calling BSE mad cow disease, and the public is worried about consuming British beef. In an attempt to calm the public, John Gummer tries to feed a burger to his four-year-old daughter Cordelia on national television. When it touches her mouth, she physically recoils, and Gummer tells the cameras that it was just too hot for her. He eats a burger himself and assures everybody that everything is okay. In June, both the UK and EU ban exports of live UK cattle more older than six months. At some point, a case of BSE is discovered in Portugal, but it's kept classified. In November, BSE reaches Switzerland. Britain closes the year with a new record of 14,181 cases, nearly double the previous year. In 1991, they diagnosed 25,026 cases, and it's also in France now. The government is slaughtering millions of cows to try to curb the spread. They might have BSE, which means that they can't bury them because they're now potentially biohazards. Instead, they have to burn them in massive quantities. In 1992, Dr. Lacey releases Unfit for Human Consumption. In his book, he talks about BSE and further claims that it can be transmitted to humans. In March, the government bans using head meat after the skull of the cow has already been opened. The British diagnosed 36,680 cases this year. It's 1993, and what better way to welcome in the new year than by diagnosing a thousand cases a week in January? From May 27th through June 2nd, the Portuguese parliament holds a hearing to determine whether BSE is in the country or not. After several testimonies and much deliberation, parliament comes to an official conclusion. Nah, no BSE here. They were wrong. In Canada, a beef cow imported from Britain is diagnosed with BSE. 
The UK closes the year with 34,370 domestic cases. In July of 1994, the EU says you can only get bone-in beef from farms that haven't had BSE cases for six years, and that meat from farms that don't fit this requirement must have the bone removed, along with visible nervous and lymphatic tissue. The UK diagnoses 23,943 cases in 1994. But, uh, don't worry guys, it can't infect humans. It's 1995, and by this point, two cows in Oman have been diagnosed with BSE, both of which were imports. The disease has also been confirmed in a cow in the Falklands! In May, a man named Stephen Churchill dies at the age of 19 from VCJD after consuming infected beef. He is the first of three to die in 1995. This is an eye-opener for the British government who puts together a team to look into these deaths. Dr. Robert Will, an experienced neurologist, is chosen to lead the investigation. In July, the EU only allows British cattle imports if the cow in question is younger than 30 months and from a herd that has been BSE-free for six years. If the cow herd doesn't meet this requirement, the cow must be deboned and have its nervous tissue and lymph nodes removed. In August, the ban on offal consumption is expanded to include a prohibition on eating any part of the head. 14,301 cases are confirmed in 1995. BC is dying down, but VCJD is beginning to show. On March 16, 1996, Dr. Will's team finally comes to a conclusion. On March 20th, Stephen Doral, the Secretary of State for Health, addresses Parliament. BSE can be transmitted to humans, and 10 people under 40 years of age have VCJD. This is not what the government was hoping for. They let the world know what the research team has found, and the media goes absolutely insane. On March 27th, the EU bans all exports of British beef and beef byproducts. This isn't even a ban that just applies to the EU. The EU just banned all exports. This means that Britain can't sell to anybody in the world. Not even Caleb. <laughs> Anyways, Britain is absolutely furious because the EU has legally forbidden them from exporting everything from steak to jelly beans. In April, Oprah talks about the situation on her show and says that she'll never eat a burger again. Oprah is, well, she... she's Oprah. The Oprah effect is absolutely real. The American Cattlemen's Association believes that her comments have harmed the industry by leading to a plummet in sales. They sue her for $10.3 million, but Oprah ends up winning. In August, the MAFF says that BSE can probably be transferred from cow to calf. 8,013 cases of BSE are diagnosed in Britain this year, and 10 people die from VCJD. In 1997, the EU banned central nervous system tissues from being used in cosmetics, which I didn't even know they were putting in there. 4,310 cases of BSE are confirmed in Britain this year, and 10 more die from VCJD. In March of 1998, the EU bans the marketing of cosmetic products containing risky materials from cows, like eyeballs and offals, which, again, what? Like, 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 they had to ban this. Also, the ban only applies to cosmetics made before April 1st of 1998. Later, BSE is diagnosed in Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. 3,179 cases are diagnosed in Britain this year, and 18 more people die from VCJD. In January of 1999, the British government orders the slaughter of all calves born from BSE-infected mothers. This applies to any calf that was born after July of 1996. In August, the EU lifts the UK export ban, but that isn't going to help the British out much. Ever since BSE was found to be able to infect humans, the entire world has been paranoid about beef, understandably. If you find BSE in your borders, a bunch of countries will immediately ban your cattle products. The FDA decides to ban blood donations from anyone who lived in the UK for six months between 1980 and 1997, just in case VCJD is able to spread through blood. BSE is also in Liechtenstein now. 2,256 cases of BSE are diagnosed in Britain in 1999, and 15 more die from VCJD. By June of 2000, over 170,000 cattle in the UK have been diagnosed with BSE. In the fight to control the epidemic, 4.7 million have been slaughtered. BSE is now in Denmark, Spain, and Germany. The beef industry is struggling. Sales are down 40% in Germany, 30% in Italy, 20% in Spain, France, and Portugal, and 30% across the EU. In December, Australia follows the United States in banning British blood. 1,311 cases of BSE are confirmed in the UK, and 28 more die from VCJD in the year 2000. In January, a new epidemic breaks out among British livestock. Foot and mouth disease spreads quickly across the UK and millions of animals are slaughtered to get it under control. Most of them are sheep, but hundreds of thousands of cows are caught up in this. The disease deals yet another blow to the industry, but the outbreak is officially declared over a year later. By the end of 2001, BSE has reached Austria, Czechia, Finland, 
Greece, Italy, Slovakia, Slovenia, and Japan. Japanese beef consumption has plummeted 70%. In the UK, suicides among farmers are up a heartbreaking 1,000%. Cases of BSE in Britain have finally fallen to triple digits, and they only diagnosed 781 cases in 2001. However, 20 more people die from BCJD. In 2002, the disease reaches Poland and Israel. 445 cases of BSE are diagnosed in the UK, and 17 more die from BCJD. In May of 2003, Canada detects their first domestic case of BSE. Later, the US finds a cow imported from Canada that has the disease as well. A bunch of countries ban imports from the US and Canada because that's just what happens now. 173 BSE cases are confirmed in the UK and they record 18 deaths from BCJD. In 2004, the FDA banned certain cow parts from being used in food, supplements, and cosmetics. BSE is pretty much over in the UK, but BCJD that deaths are still pretty bad. In 2004, 9 people die. In 2005, 5 people die. In 2006, BSE is in Sweden. 5 people die in the UK from BCJD this year. In 2007, 5 people die. In 2008, only 2. In 2009, in December of 2010, a cow dies in Brazil. It is confirmed to have had BSE. This is a really bad disease, so this is probably something the Brazilian government should be open about. For some reason, they don't tell anybody until December of 2012, almost exactly two years later. So, why did they wait so long? It could have been trade-related. I mean, Japan did ban Brazilian beef the day after they reported it. But personally, I think the government was too busy watching and re-watching the new movie that came out, which, in all honesty, would be an acceptable excuse. In 2012, Britain finally reports zero new deaths from VCJD. In 2014, Brazil reaches Romania and gets to Norway in 2015. Also in 2015, for the first time in nearly three decades, Britain doesn't diagnose any cases of BSE. And there you have it, the mad cow epidemic. Worldwide, around 180,000 cows were diagnosed with BSE, and as of 2019, 232 people have died from VCJD. The vast majority of BSE and BCJD cases were in the UK, or at least believed to have been in the UK at some point in their lives. The disease was, well, is horrifying, but world governments are constantly monitoring cattle so that there won't be a second wave of BSE. Your odds of eating infected meat are incredibly low nowadays. Alright, so what can we learn from this? Uh... Hmm... How about infectious brain damage is really bad? Thank you all for watching, and uh, see ya.